Welcome back everybody to another video on the Volvo sleeper build proudly brought to you by eBay. In the last video we went ahead and put the Ford 88 axle ugh, in the car. That bad boy turned out really awesome. It's gonna be capable of a lot of power. But in that last video we also went ahead and test fitted the LS and it didn't fit. And it didn't fit because the oil pan was hitting the cross member. Today's video is all about getting that LS in there and getting it mounted. Since it didn't fit in the last video, we have to modify the oil pan, possibly modify the cross member. And then once we get it to fit, we gotta make motor mounts and transmission mounts. Now eBay offers a bunch of aftermarket oil pans for the LS that probably would have fix this issue, but I like doing things myself here. So I'm going to try to modify the stock oil pan, just put a little notch in it in order to get it to fit. But I don't know if that's possible. Depending on where the pickup tube is, depending how the actual inside of the oil pan looks, I might not be able to cut it up. So let's figure that out. Let's jump right into it, take the oil pan off the LS6 and figure out what we can or can't do. So the one thing that I noticed is that the pickup tube location is very close to this front wall, and that is what we would have to notch. So if we want to modify the oil pan, then we're gonna have to modify the pickup tube, which is possible, it's not, the, not that hard, but something I wanted to avoid. I don't want to compromise the oiling system on this engine, it's a very expensive engine, and oil is the most important part. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put the engine in as it is, without the oil pan, and then we're gonna test with the oil pan, see if we can get the oil pan on once the engine is in. Now, obviously I have to be very careful putting this engine in because there's no protection on the windage tray or the crank or the, you know, the rod caps are like right underneath the windage tray. So if I drop that thing, something happens, strap snaps, uh, <laughs> GG. Uh, so to prevent that, <laughs> I put a pillow on the subframe. <laughs> It is more or less in. It's a little bit tilted upwards because the transmission is now hitting the trans tunnel. The problem, if you can see, is that the windage tray is already pretty much hitting the subframe, the steering rack, and the sway bar. And I mean, obviously, this is much lower than the windage tray. Let's go ahead and try to fit the factory pin in there for the walls. Seeming like we might have to be doing some hammering in the trans tunnel and maybe removing the sway bar. Unfortunately, I can't remove like the steering rack or anything and that's the next highest part. I looked at the trans tunnel with a flashlight and discovered I had left the old shifter in there. So that's why the trans couldn't go up anymore. So I'll pull the engine out, take that shifter out, whack some things and maybe we can get the trans to go up high enough so we can pull the motor up higher too. So it looks like this is where the LS is happy. It's about as high as it can go and far back against the firewall as it can go. There isn't much clearance between the windage tray and the sway bar, but, uh, but it looks like if I get an aftermarket oil pan, it will fit. I think we've got enough clearance for the steering shaft. It'll be close, but that wouldn't be hard to modify. The only problem right now is that the trans is a little bit too high, but the engine's already raking back. So we're gonna have to either hammer a lot or make part of a new trans tunnel, which is a lot more work than I was hoping for. So like the trans is down there, it's pretty deep, um, and it fits just fine, but then it this, the trans tunnel drops off dramatically right there. And that's where we're having clearancing issues. At least we will have clearance issues once we get a drive shaft. So looks like we might have to remake that part possibly. So the question is what's next? 
and I don't know the answer. Gotta think. I think I've decided I'm gonna try modifying the stock pan. It'd be worst case scenario, I have to throw it away. I'm gonna throw it away anyway. I'm not gonna use it if I buy a, buy a different pan. And I think, according to my measurements, the front will fit under the sway bar. So I just have to measure, or I just have to modify the back. There's no going back now. Let's see if this fits. Well, in order to get it in there, I definitely have to lift the motor up. So I will lift the motor up, see if I can get it in there. It's impossible to get this damn thing on. Is that we're not gonna get back in. So I definitely underestimated the size of this engine. I was expecting it to be able to put it in and be done, but unfortunately we're gonna have a little bit more work on our hands. The problem is that it is physically impossible to get the oil pan on the engine if the engine and the trans aren't together in the car. So what I have to do is put the engine in, put the oil pan on, then put the trans on. Then the other problem is that I can't really put the trans on the engine unless the engine is mounted. Imagine trying to put a pretty heavy trans on an engine that's floating around on a hoist while on my back under a car. It, it's not gonna work. So, <laughs> let's get ready to build some mounts. So now we got two little plates with bolts welded to them that go in the factory motor mount locations. And now these motor mounts are gonna be special because they are going to be the first motor mounts I've ever built with bushings. See, on the drift truck when I built the motor mounts, well, those are solid motor mounts. And then the Riley Miata, I didn't build motor mounts. I built an entire frame. So for the motor mounts, I'm gonna go ahead and steal the polyurethane bushings out of these old stock control arms. They fit perfectly in a one and three quarter inch DOM tube. So it's just, it's perfect. So these are the finished bushing assemblies. Now, just like the solid axle, I had my friend Dan cut me out some plates for the motor mounts. So this plate gets bolted to the motor and then you weld two of these uprights and those uprights bolt through the bushing like so. And then the bushing gets welded to the things that we made on the subframe. So the motor is in without the transmission. So I just have to spend some time measuring stuff, getting the motor as centered and level and such as possible. If you were to ask me, hey Caleb, what's the hardest part about doing an engine swap? I would say this right here, building the motor mounts and getting the motor exactly where you want it. I know the first time I did it, I thought it had to be exactly in the center, exactly level with the ground, perfect, perfect, it, has, it had to be exact, otherwise it wouldn't work at all. And that's just not the case. You want it as close to center and level and such as possible, but if you have to tweak some of those things to get it to fit, that's okay. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm gonna go ahead and spend some time measuring, trying to get it perfect.
removed the motor mounts so I could weld them up. Got the passenger side out just fine, but I welded the driver side one in in a way that it's impossible to remove. Possible to remove about moving the steering rack. So now I have to remove the steering rack. And in order to remove the steering rack, I got to clean the floor because that is a pile of power steering fluid. And in order to clean the floor, I got to take out the garbage. And in order to take out the garbage, I got to get wet. One thing you guys should know about the, the shop, the garbage can fills up really quickly and then stays full for a very long time. Because <laughs> I'm always way too lazy to go take it out. Ugh. Oh god. Uh because we're getting low money. Shielded, didn't draw a truck that said like hundred bucks in taxes. Uh, I don't know why I'm paying taxes because we never actually Yeah, definitely make sure you don't have any brake clean soaked towels on your welding table before you start welding. <laughs> and it's bolted onto the motor mounts. The back is sitting on something, so we're gonna lift it up. This is good, these bushings are solid, but they do allow for a little bit of a movement. Yeah, there we go. Well, just the engine alone is definitely still lighter than the last engine and trans, which makes sense. Damn guys, like this is looking great. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to fit the transmission in there without very many issues. The oil pan clears. I can actually stick my fingers under the sway bar. We obviously have to weld up the oil pan, but this is, this is awesome news. And then we take our turbo manifolds, which fit great. They'll require some modification back here, but the fact that they fit the shock towers and on this side, they fit the steering rack. Thinking the turbo is gonna go somewhere like right here. For now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the motor, then remove the oil pan and weld that, weld, weld that oil pan up. Unfortunately, I screwed up because in order to weld this oil pan, I need a thicker piece of tungsten and air gas, the store that sells that, is closed. And tomorrow is Thanksgiving. So I'm not gonna be able to finish the oil pan and thus move forward until after Thanksgiving. But I wanna get this video out to you guys so you can at least see the engine in the car and so I have something to upload. And I just, I don't have anything else to do right now. So that is going to be it. We got the engine in, the motor mounts made. In the next video, we will finish that oil pan. We will mount the transmission, build a transmission mount. And you guys can watch that video right now if you head over to Patreon. Remember, all these parts were purchased off eBay. Huge thank you to eBay for supporting this build and making it possible. If you guys are interested in any of the products I bought, I included parts lists down in the description below. If you guys want to build a cool car, you can do it all through eBay. So I recommend going down and checking the description down below. Thank you all so much for your support. I'll see you next time. Happy Thanksgiving and goodbye. Thanksgiving is a weird American holiday where we eat turkey.